Hey, everybody. I'm John Stoltz. Uh, thanks for making it through the day. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to cover kind of, you know, a lot of discussions have been around QoS, uh, quality service hintings. Um, and I just kind of want to step back a little bit from it and make sure, you know, we have a sense of what we actually want out of these. Um, so just as a quick problem overview, you know, Linux obviously handles a ton of different workloads. Um, and, uh, you know, for the most part, they're skid normal. We do have things like uh, Skid deadline and uh, idle um, to provide other sorts of classes, but for the most part, everybody's using uh, Skid normal, um, and it tries to do its best. But there's everything, all, all of the different types of workloads that can be run. So we need, uh, you know, for the most part, when people are trying to tune for a specific workload, the kind of go-to solution is to go to the global tuning knobs and optimize their one system for this one use case. Um, take that to extremes, you get SkedX, where you have a scheduler that's tuned for your specific workload. But this isn't really composable as those workloads change or if you want to combine different workloads. I, I know there's SkedX Quick Store that was working on that. Um, so the idea is that if applications can provide more insight into their needs, the scheduler can you know, react uh, uh, more appropriately. Um, this is similar to what SkidRT and Sked Deadline does, but you know, hopefully you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't be quite so prescriptive of it. Um, a lot of different OSs already have this, you know, Mac OS and Windows. Um, in Android, we have multiple approaches here, which is a bit of a problem. Um, and then, you know, in general, a lot of folks tend to think of this as, you know, we're trading throughput or latency as sort of the axis, but you can actually have both of those be separate axes. Um, and also, when people talk about latency, often it is not very clear what they mean because it could be, you know, interrupt latency or you could be talking about like web browser, you know, load latency, uh, which is quite a bit more uh, time. Um, at OSPM, we had a whole bunch of conversations and this kept on kind of coming up the need for some sort of QoS uh, uh, API, um, but exactly what that API will be is still unclear. Um, uh, there's been a number of different efforts going on that's on uh, had, uh, the latency nice uh, earlier and case submitted this uh, uh, skid QS skid at attributes that he kind of talked about just previously um, the big thing is that this is just a hint and so being the kernel we don't want to commit to a specific behavior we just want applications to be able to provide some insights so we can try to figure out what the best thing is but because we're not going to necessarily commit to anything, I think in our discussions we get really kind of hand wavy about what's going to happen. Um, and the thing is, is that if we want to improve the latency of some application, there's actually a whole bunch of different actions we might take. Um, and so because of this, I kind of feel like everyone's thinking of a different set of these when they're having these conversations. So it's really hard to kind of, you know, figure out what we really need. Um, Additionally, what actions we take may be different on different hardware. And so we also need to have some sense of kind of policy and hardware description to provide more insight as to when we would take various actions. Um, and so this kind of requires, you know, working kind of both sides. So not only are we defining just the QoS uh, API, but we also need to just figure out what, what information we need in the scheduler uh, to, to do so, kind of getting to the discussion point, the um, thing that I just want to do is I just want to enumerate the actions that people are thinking about so that what, what we might take at the various points and what policy inputs those are going to need as well because I think we need some more infrastructure in the kernel to be able to make the right decisions on all the different types of hardware. Um, and so I've tried to kind of sketch this out a little bit with these uh, various cases of kind of, okay, we have it, wake up, we can make placement decisions and we'll, you know, take in things like the wake up latencies for the various CPUs maybe to decide, you know, where we're going to send uh, a task. Um, you know, at wake up, we also can decide whether or not we're going to preempt the current task and that may have to do with what other tasks are currently running and that priority of that. Um, you know, when things are on the run queue, we can kind of move where in the run queue uh, in that order they might be so they can run sooner. Um, you know, similarly, we can change the slice length to let things run for a longer period of time so they can hopefully get done sooner. Um, and then once we're running, we've got the CPU frequency ramp up as well as various other uh, buses or caches uh, that have to get ramped up. Um, and then things like the uh, migration, uh, once we're running, is another 
choice. Um, and then kind of I've got another one here for like a load change user hook. This is kind of based on some APIs that we've seen in the Android world where people are kind of wanting kind of like a boost button. And it's, I, I suspect boost is maybe the wrong way to go, but the idea of like, I'm changing my behavior now, and, and so we can kind of reevaluate um, might be a useful API. Um, but at this point, I just really wanna open it up and have the discussion of what's, what's missing here, what are things that people you know, think we should be considering as we get to this. And the other part too is that right now, the idea of just saying latency sensitive or throughput sensitive, um, there's so many different actions we might take it, kind of hints that we might need slightly finer grained hint descriptors. Uh, at that point, I just kind of wanted to open it up. Uh, John, I was wondering if you left out maybe one other item might be, I think some of the end users are looking at as like a group of threads, not, I'm not talking about a thread, it's like my use case that needs these behaviors. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to just say, oh, I just want this for one thread, let me go set it for a thread. So that's another role in this, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And coming from the uh, Chrome OS, which we've been talking a lot about this, I mean, we have uh, huge issues with the scheduling when we have uh, renderers that need to be done. So there's like a huge set, like it's a flow control and trying to get it so it's input driven uh, where it needs, like it's event driven. So there are certain threads that are event driven. They're like, okay, they should be small bursts, fast, as soon as the event happens, they execute and then they cut and they're done. These same threads could also run JavaScript. So we also want to control. Well, it's, it's, but that's the way it is, and it's not going to change. I mean, that's, and the thing is, um, so actually our, the way we actually gotten something, this is what we've done for our quality of service, basically, it was the deadline, this is why we're pushing the deadline server. We're setting these threads to RT. And, um, but limiting them to like 60%. I mean, it's not like usually like the default's 95%. We're really limiting them a lot because most cases they just run real quick. They, there's a lot of them that run, boom, boom, boom. But we, there's also sometimes it depends on sked other tasks that if, you, if they start the sked other tasks, then the latency shoot up again. <laughs> so we actually found out about 40%, we have to give sked other like 40%. So yes about the RT, it's actually one of the skid, fair, skid normal like biggest enemies is RT task because people who want latency, they convert to RT and they inadvertently create higher latency for other tasks and these other tasks start asking for RT and like there, there is a little bit of a positive feedback loop that's creating a problem over here. I once, I had that prototype at OSPM like two years ago with the sked high type of thing. And that actually really did really well. Basically, a lot of people want a sked other where they just say these tasks are like real time or they run at a higher priority than these guys, but they're not real time tasks. They kind of, they still sked around like a normal sked other type. But it's like you want a way that these things will preempt these guys. Like these things are more batch and these are reactionary. <clears throat> so, and for those tasks, increasing their nice priority with, uh, is not enough to provide them most of the CPU? Uh, I sh showed that graph. Yeah. What happens is we have a thousand threads. Yeah. And if you, what we did, I actually put in there, I put like nice minus 19 or whatever, yeah. the lowest thing, and then just normal sked whatever. And I ran a busy loop of this thing, 19, it had a good amount of CPU. But when I put a thousand tasks, it was just a sliver of CPU it got. In other words, we don't want this minus 19 to be affected if there's a million other tasks. It still gets a good chunk of the CPU. So the more that you add, that it shrinks, and that is where we have the issue. Yeah, with the nice problem, it's the same as the RT, because I've seen lots of people using like lower nice to get better preemption, but at the same time, like they start growing and now the effectiveness of this will start to decrease as you add more tasks. But something else I've have noticed, I don't know if, if before e EVDF, there is the skid, like the period, like the skid, what's it called, the skid period? Uh, like the latency in us, which is basically how long you have the fairness. This defaulted to a very high value by default, by the way, and that has caused a huge latency. So if you reduce that, for instance, that will help quite a lot for pre-EVDF, uh, which makes things better. And one thing like as well, like I wanted to, maybe it's a bit of out of discussion, but like I think if we have EVDF and we want to have the runtime, 
the default like slice value being like three milliseconds or higher is quite high. At least not, not being a multiple of tick is a problem because you're actually not gonna preempt unless the next tick is gonna happen if you don't preempt at wake up. And you wanna have precise preemption as well. So I think one of the things that we want to have to help with latencies, which, sorry, it's not a QS stuff, it's like enabling a chart tick by default. So you want people to opt out of this because this means you are unlikely, especially if you have a higher tick value, like four millisecond, like we do, it's quite bad. This means you have to wait really for a long time and if frame is eight millisecond, four millisecond is too huge. So having that chart tick preempting things faster could help quite a lot. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that clearly show one of the problem is that everybody want to have better latency, but for one use case, you want to increase one knob and for the other use case, for the improving the latency, you need to decrease. So it's quite difficult then from a scheduler point of view. It means that it's probably not the right value. We need to find a value that should go up for everybody who wants to increase or decrease their latency. And in this case, typically, if the tick, increase the tick or the scale slice is better for latency in one case, or, and it's better to decrease for the other case, probably not the right things i mean uh, otherwise it's impossible for us to make a, a good decision i think the workloads are also different that's why yeah f for me to be honest that's an expected result and i think we need to do more debugging because we might be hitting because one of the things i've keep hitting is that there is always with these unexpected results there is a hidden dependency that nobody is aware of yeah, that's causing this bug i haven't moved to evdf yet no, no. This would be with evdf okay result was when we switched to EVDF because the EVDF had a short tick and we were getting like pre where things were scheduling too much and we actually had to slow th the scheduler from constantly I think we're, uh, we just had a, uh, the uh, scheduling overhead shot up and that's why we lowered it yes <laughs> he doesn't want to be on record <laughs> this is recorded <laughs> Um, so no, with EVDF, there is the base tick, which you can change, and I was thinking of actually increasing that. Um, and with 12, we'll get the interface to set it per task. Uh, uh, one thing is we, um, Yusuf, uh, who was at OSPM, he left Google, so uh, I, don't, he, I don't even know where he went yet. So, but he had all this great um, analysis about it, and that's he's the one that he found out about the tick. He's uh, found, he was doing all the tweaks. One, he was the one thing with the uh, what's it called the wake up or what is it, the uh, eligibility, ignoring eligibility. Uh, first, he turned off eligibility, and things got better. But then, then my other thing I want to do with the. Uh, uh, the sked auto where things could schedule, like ignore the tick and say schedule meme on the next tick, and but then if you abuse it, the eligibility will kill you. But if we turn off eligibility, now you have abuse. Um, so we need eligibility still enabled. But I think someone was, exper was someone here experimenting with just turning off eligibility. You that was doing it, turning yeah. off, or you? Yeah, you're turning off eligibility for just the wake up. And we haven't we haven't had it. Yusuf left, so we haven't done the analysis yet. <laughs> so, How do you so want? on that uh, with EVDF complete uh, for, for the use case that we wanted, running those tasks as shared batch solves our problem. So they get to run long enough. Uh, but, but this is with the EVDF complete. So things have improved since the last two months, oh. at least, yeah. So I, I may try to focus it a little bit because yeah. we're, 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 go, we're going back to the global tuning knobs yeah. and I want to try to get I, some yeah. sense of... I actually was coming back to this. So out of this list, to be honest, I see a lot of them just talking about potential bugs in the kernel, or at least understanding. Like, I think, I think I've highlighted at least on this debuggability. There is some problem with wake up path where things just unnecessarily long. There is a bug somewhere. With the slice links, we already have nice value. If that's not good enough, it's good to know why. The ordering, I don't know to be honest, like if the ordering, we have like next body, I think, to address the ordering, which you can say like, I really want to run next, which can give you. I don't know if that can be exposed to some ex extent. But I see a lot of these over here, like not all of them really needs to be hand. It just maybe need, need to be better analyzed to see if we have bugs. 
and describe and, them in a different way if we need to. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting that each of these are an individual hint. The idea is that we'll use a combination of these depending on the hardware and as to what we want to do. But I, I just wanted to try to enumerate what the options were and make sure we have a consistent view so when we get to designing the API, we can see how these will all come together. And I don't think all of them are really bugs, right? Some of them is more like lack of information of what the, the, the workload wants. Like whether you want to wake up the little CPU and take the latency hit, or like which is the right answer is going to depend on the use case. And that's where we think the hints would be useful. I don't think there's going to be one solution that fits all. So the first one was the placement. We already have UCLAM min and UCLAM max. Uh, that should be working. And for the slice length is nice. Migration margin, I don't think anybody should care about migration margin, so I would never be happy to expose that. It's like what I'm, hoping I'm addressing to remove that hard-coded number to be a proper like limitation. The evaluating of the utilization, I don't know, to be honest. It's, uh, I don't know how to translate that. <laughs> so the RQ order one is the only one that I can see potentially like I'm more important. And the priority of running versus waking, I don't know, like uh, this is potentially like, I don't know, that's what I think Peter's tried to address with the running runtime uh, patch. How does util clamp help with which CPU to wake up? I understand which frequency you might run, whether you need a big or little. But if it's a, you don't want to run at high frequency, but you still want to use a big CPU versus little CPU. Well, if the system is perfectly defined. It's not I know because of the microarchitectural differences, but your performance level should be linear. And like, if you really need to run at specific performance level, that's just like on the no, big. The, the, point. the other issue with the wake up is the wake up latency of the CPU. So not if you have a CPU that's in deep idle, it may take quite a while for that CPU to start running and to do something. So I think we tried at some point to take into account the idle state of the CPU, but we are always in this kind of situation where if you have a, a burst of tasks waking up, by the time you look at the idle state of the CPU, the CPU have already started to wake up. So I mean, the, it, it happened that quite often the idle state was just no more correct when you are doing, taking a decision. So that, that's the point. It's really something that. Part of this, I guess, came out of some comments that Raphael made at OSPM where it was always, the, the placement doesn't matter, it's just to crank the frequency because if a CPU is in deep idle, it's gonna take a long time to wake yeah. up. And so just run it on the current CPU and crank it seemed like a better policy. If I, hopefully I'm uh, summarizing that properly. But, um, so that's a case where that, you know, distributing tasks isn't the right choice. Sorry, but coming back to, I guess, the point of your talk, I think we have a slight thin tendency to derail a little bit. <laughs> but when we, I mean, we start saying, okay, we need like this API or this way to define the requirements, but then we jump right into fixing the, the, the problems. Right? So I'm not sure how can we actually try to focus on the on the API? I'm not sure if, I don't know, because you, for example, you listed several APIs that are out there. I'm not sure if we should start maybe seeing what those are composed yeah. of and try to make sense of those, try um, or start from scratch. Because I, another thing, I mean, latency, how you define it, it really matters because it can be latency of wake up latency, but it can also mean the uh, scheduling, scheduling latency, it can be response time, so you are not really interested in the wake up latency, but you are really interested in finishing before your deadline. That can be another thing. So, yeah, just, just seeing that, um, yes, uh, we've been, been starting this discussion multiple times, but always um, derailing, so I'm not sure how to do it better. Though. Anyway, I was hoping that if we can get at least get this kind of space well-defined, then as we start looking at what we're mapping to it, it'll go where we have things. To be honest, in my opinion, like what the hint is, is, is something needs to be experimental, but having one unified interface where we can just easily add things, which is what I tried to, to propose, is, is something that you don't want to constantly change the skid set attribute to with, the, with the new fields that are custom to specific end. You just want to have a generic QS API, then you can just have an enum that this is, means that, and if it doesn't work, just 
like return an error. <laughs> no, and I'm, That's what I'm hoping that we can do. Yeah, so we can at least, like when people come with the proposal, we can add a new one. And if you want to remove it, just like that value will start returning an error in the future. At lunch, Peter was talking a bit about, you know, having something that maybe is compatible with other OSs so that at least applications moving between it have some sense of it, but then also maybe extending to our specific needs are a good way. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Got one in the back there. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll close it up here soon. Uh, yes, I was trying to understand what's the model for these uh, loads. Uh, for example, there's latency, but that's also, if I look at it from high level perspective, it's not only about CPU, but also uh, are the pages of the process being evicted or not? Uh, what's their presence in the page cache? So I was wondering, or uh, is, does this apply to a specific C group, or is it? Uh, uh, how much do you trust the load uh, to give you feedback? So I was trying to get a like, broader perspective and feeling of where this is going, and does it tap into, for example, page reclamation, this sort of things? So yeah, I have, I have not thought of it from the memory management side. Most of this is I'm kind of coming from the scheduler space. But, uh, I mean, yes, obviously that can have an effect, and things like IO weight is another topic that's been, you know, widely discussed and has uh, involved here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things where it, it's, it's, uh, it does get more complicated as well. But I think, you know, to some extent, wanting just an initial step of applications providing more input so that the scheduler can make better decisions is kind of the, the key need, and it's just a matter of, okay, then what do we need, and what is that interface going to look like? I think we're at time, so. Uh, yeah, about 10 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds, any, any. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. So everyone should know on the back of your uh, badge, there's a place, I don't know, I'm not sure if they're doing buses or not, I think you have to just take the uh, train to get there. What? No buses. No buses, that's why I didn't think we could afford it. So uh, uh, hopefully everyone can get that. Thank you very much, I'm gonna save the notes that we didn't take. Um, <laughs> it was very nice uh, headings, but I know it's not, but I, I, I was too tired to take it. My laptop would do it. But anyway, uh, see you guys at the uh, event, and thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.